This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and I'm just seated here on my divan waiting for you so we can gather around the wonderful Word of God. And this week I'm teaching a series called Speaking in Tongues, What Is It and Is It Really for Everyone? When I was growing up in our church, we didn't even believe in speaking in tongues. And today there's a lot of people who do believe in it, but they say, well, maybe it's not for everyone. But I showed you in the last program that in the New Testament, when you study a span of 23 years from Pentecost all the way to Acts chapter 19, it was always the pattern that people were saved, and I call that the first work of grace, and then subsequently they had another experience called the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which I refer to as the second work of grace, and when they received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, every single time they also spoke in tongues. But what is tongues? Why do you have to speak in tongues? What is tongues really all about? And that is what I'm going to be sharing with you in today's program. But you really ought to order this entire series and remember that it comes with a study guide so that you can read all the material while you're seeing or hearing the series. And this week, we're also offering you my book, which is called The Holy Spirit and You, Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. And we're offering you my book called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you've not ordered yours yet, please order yours today. And we're offering you my brand new book, which is not related to what I'm teaching right now, but I want you to have it. And you can order it by going online or by giving us a call. And the name of the book is Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters and the World Before the Flood. I don't believe I've ever had more fun writing a book than writing this one. And by the way, I did so much research on this subject. This book has more than 300 endnotes. That's a lot of resources. It has more than 300 pieces of art, graphics, and illustration, including photos that my team and I took of the ruins of Noah's Ark that really are lying on the lower slopes of the Ararat mountain range. And all of that is in this amazing book. And the subtitle says, How the Events of Noah's Ark and the Flood are Relevant to the End of the Age. So you can order that by giving us a call or by going online. And actually, we've got a lot of resources on our website. You ought to just go there and look at all of them. You'll be amazed. And if you need prayer, let us know how to pray for you. We really want to pray for you. And the moment that phone rings and the number's on your screen, or the moment the email shows up in our inbox and our email address is right there, the moment we hear from you, we're going to begin to pray according to your need, and Jesus will do what needs to be done. Sometimes what needs to be done is different than what we ask. But the good news is Jesus knows what needs to be done. And we'll pray, Jesus will hear us, and he will act in your life. Say amen. But today is going to be good. And today we're going to talk about what are tongues? What is, the, what is the noise about tongues? Why are tongues so important? What is it really all about? I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Today, before we get into the teaching, I want to share two wonderful testimonies that really blessed me. Listen to this. Dear Rick and Denise and family, I have no idea if you will ever personally read this letter, but somehow I trust it will make it into your hands. Words cannot express what your unlikely life story has meant to me. I've been sitting on the edge of my seat with bated breath as I have read every page of this book, each chapter building upon the other. I've laughed, cried, and most importantly, been challenged and hungry for more of God in my own life. You so beautifully and eloquently told your story, including your upbringing as a little boy, your life as a young married man and a young father, and now your present ministry. Only God could do this kind of an outreach into a very unlikely place, the former Soviet Union. Wow. We've listened to your teaching and seen you on various platforms for a few years, but never did we realize your humble beginnings. Thanks to all of you for being the mighty warriors you are and for what you're doing for the Lord. 
Well, I'm going to tell you, our story is unlikely. <laughs> and if you've never read our story, unlikely, you should order that book. But God has a story for you too. And if you feel you're unlikely to be used, you're the very one that he's tapping on the shoulder to be used to do something wonderful. But hey, here's one more testimony. Hello, prayer partners. After calling today and receiving prayer with one of your team members, I thanked her for taking time with me. I expressed how grateful my husband and I are for your prayer team. We have a list of about 15 ministries with their prayer line phone numbers. The guess whose number is at the top of our list you guessed it, Renner Ministries. You wonderful people are so well-schooled in the Word and in spiritual matters, and you pray with faith. Well, I want to say thank you because we want to pray with faith, and if you have a need in your life, we want to pray with you as well. But today we're going to talk about tongues and what is it really all about, and I want to begin with my personal testimony. When I was a young man, I got really hungry for the things of God, and I began to seek the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I didn't realize how easy it was to receive it. And I sought it and sought it. But finally, one day I opened my heart and I was gloriously baptized in the Holy Ghost, which I call the second work of grace. I'd been saved much earlier in life and I had peace with God. I knew that if I died, I was going to heaven. I knew that everything between me and God was all right. And I had peace, but I didn't have power. And in fact, in our church, we really didn't see much power. We were even afraid to witness. We went out and regularly testified, but my goodness, it just terrified me to go out and witness because I didn't have any power. Power comes with the second work of grace, which is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Well, finally, I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Bam! It was like the power of God hit me, and I knew I had been filled but I did not immediately speak in tongues until several hours later. First of all, I was with someone else, and I was a little timid about speaking in tongues, but boy, I sure wanted to. But when I finally got into a place where I was by myself, I got on my knees, and I said, all right, Lord, here it goes. I've been filled with the Spirit. Now I want my spirit to pray. I want to pray in tongues. And I began to pray, and suddenly new words begin to come out of my mouth, and I stopped it. And I thought, what are you doing? You're just making this up. This is not real. And I stopped. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, no, no, no. This is right. Keep going. So I started again and just fearful that I was making it up. I stopped it again. And I heard the Holy Spirit said, come on, one more time. Just let it go. And I began to speak in tongues again. And bam, this time it was like a river began to flow out of my inner man. And that is what happens when you get filled with the Spirit. Listen to this. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 24, Jesus said, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Did you hear that? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever your heart is filled with, it's going to come out of your mouth. And I'll give you some examples. If your heart is filled with unforgiveness then what's going to come out of your mouth? Words of unforgiveness. That's just the law that Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if your heart is filled with unforgiveness, you're going to have words of unforgiveness in your mouth. Your mouth is the outlet for what is in you. If your heart is filled with bitterness, bitter words are going to come out of your heart because you're out of your mouth because your mouth is the outlet for what is in you. If you're filled with joy, what's going to come out of your mouth? Joyful words are going to come out of your mouth because the mouth is the outlet for what is inside you. So when you look at the book of Acts, starting in Acts chapter 2, all the way to Acts chapter 19, which is a span of 23 years, you find that every time people's hearts are filled with the Holy Spirit, Tongues comes out their mouth every single time. If you didn't see the last program, please go to the archives or order the entire series where I show you very clearly from the book of Acts that every time people are baptized in the Holy Spirit, they also speak with tongues. And that is because whatever is in the heart comes out of the mouth. And of course, the first example we find is in Acts chapter 2, 
where they're all gathered together on the day of Pentecost and suddenly there's a sound of a mighty rushing wind and they all were filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says in verse 4, they begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit gave them utterance. And here's what we discover. When a person is baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is a subsequent work of grace after salvation, that looses the tongue of their spirit to speak. And suddenly their spirit begins speaking. And that's what tongues is. Tongues is not mere gibberish. It is your human spirit speaking to God. And when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, it is like the power of God cuts the rope on your tongue and your tongue is loosed and your spiritual tongue begins to speak and spiritual words begin to flow up and through your mouth and we call it tongues or we call it a prayer language. It is a real legitimate language. Now, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, the Apostle Paul very clearly states that we as individuals are three parts. We are spirit, we are soul, and we are the body. Most people are aware of the body because you can see it. The soul is the mind, it's the emotions, it's your will. But lying deep below all of it is the human spirit. That's the real you. The real you is the you that we cannot see. It's the you at the very core of your being, your spirit. Your spirit lives in this body. Your spirit thinks and functions through your soul. But if you put all that aside and go down to the very deepest part of you, the very deepest part of you is spirit. It's spirit. Well, let me ask you, what language does spirit speak? Does spirit speak German? Does spirit speak Spanish? Does spirit speak French? Does spirit speak Russian? Does spirit speak English? What language does spirit speak? Well, let me tell you. Just like a German speaks German, a Spaniard speaks Spanish, a Russian speaks Russian, a French person speaks French, you speak English, spirit speaks spirit. Spirit is the language of the human spirit. Spirit speaks spirit. Well, in John chapter 4, verse 24, Jesus said, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So hold on. I'm a spirit. That's the deepest part of me. And God is a spirit. Spirit speaks spirit, which means when I begin to speak in tongues, when my spiritual tongue has been loosed and suddenly I'm able to pray in a spiritual heavenly language, I am speaking spiritual language, spirit to spirit. God is a spirit. I'm a spirit. And now my spirit is connecting with God and it is bypassing my mind altogether. And my friends, eventually when you just pray in English, you run out of words. You know, my wife, Denise, tells a testimony about before she was filled with the Holy Spirit. She was lying on her bed one night and she was trying to worship the Lord and just trying to find words to say, Jesus, how much I love you. And she said, Lord, you are just stupendous. <laughs> and when she said you're stupendous, she said, oh, that's it. I've run out of words. I need a heavenly language to communicate. And that's when Denise received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Suddenly her spiritual tongue was loosed and she began to pray in other tongues. And suddenly she moved into a realm of prayer like she had never had in her entire life. My friends, it exceeds human vocabulary. It is your spirit speaking to God who also is a spirit. It is the highest level of prayer and intercession. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you begin to speak with other tongues, it is not just gibberish. It is truly the language of the human spirit. And your spirit now is crying out to God in the purest language possible. It doesn't mean you shouldn't pray in your own language. You need to because it develops your mind. It helps you to know the will of God. But hey, when you pray in tongues, other things happen as well. Now reach for your Bible, and I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we're going to see what else happens when you pray in tongues. The question is, what are tongues? What's it really all about? Well, I'm going to give you the answer. And when you come to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the Apostle Paul is writing to the Corinthians, and he addresses the issue of tongues. And when you come to chapter 14, 
and verse 2, he says, For he that speaks in an unknown tongue, by the way, the word speak, the Greek is a form of the Greek word leleo, which means to converse. This is a real language. He that converses in an unknown tongue. Now, if you have a King James Version, notice that the word unknown is italicized. That means it was supplied by the translators. It's not in the original text. The idea is it's a language that is not naturally known to you. It is a spiritual language. For he that converses is not just speaking. It's a real language. You're carrying on communication with God. For he that converses in a tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. So we find that now we're talking about a spiritual language or a prayer language. And then he goes on to say, For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit, speaking in the Spirit, praying in tongues, he speaketh mysteries. Now, I have an entire series called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. You ought to order that series. You can order it by going online or by calling us. But in the series, I teach that the moment you got saved and the Holy Spirit came in, that's the first work of grace. You were sealed by the Spirit. You were saved. You're on the way to heaven. If you don't ever receive anything else from God, that seals you. You're born again. You're going to heaven. And when the Holy Spirit comes into you, He brings the mind of God. He brings the will of God. He needs every, He has every answer to every question you will ever ask because the Holy Spirit knows it all. He comes in which means the answers you need are not floating in the atmosphere. They're in you because the Holy Spirit is in you. And now we find in this verse that when you begin to pray in tongues, you literally begin to release those mysteries from your spirit, the will of God, the answers to your question. When you pray in tongues, you literally begin to dredge your human spirit and the spirit of God begins to bring all the answers up to your mind so that you gain understanding of what you need to know. That also happens when you pray in tongues. But wait, look at 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, we're talking about a supernatural language, edifies himself. <laughs> what does that mean? Some people means, it means to say it means to charge up like a battery. Well, that's nice, but that's not what the Greek word means. The Greek word edify means to expand or to increase capacity. It is actually an architectural term that was used like this. If you had a building or a house, and suddenly it could no longer accommodate everything. You had to expand the house. You had to knock the walls out. You had to push them out to make the room bigger, to increase the ability to accommodate more. And now Paul uses that word and says that when you pray in tongues, you're literally pushing your borders out. You're increasing your spiritual capacity so you can receive more and more and more and more and more. And for me, this is very important because when I study the Bible or when I prepare, when I'm seeking truth from the Lord and I don't just seem to understand what I'm studying, I begin to pray in tongues and I can literally feel my capacity increasing to receive more divine revelation. And that also happens when you pray in tongues. You increase your spiritual capacity. But wait, there's one more thing very clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Look at this, if you would, in verse 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, notice he uses the word pray. This is your human spirit speaking to God. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, then Paul clearly says, my spirit prayeth. My spirit prayeth, but my understanding, my mind is unfruitful. And then he adds in verse 15, what is it then? I will pray with my spirit and I will pray with my understanding also. So there's a difference. You can pray in your spiritual language and you can pray in your natural language. And then he adds, I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also, which means you can sing in tongues, you can sing in your own natural language. And then in the next verse, he says, else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, which means when you're praying in tongues, you're also blessing God and you're giving thanks well. It is also one of the highest levels of praise and worship. And then when you come to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 18, the Apostle Paul says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you all. Well, hey, if the Apostle Paul needed to speak in tongues, then I need to speak in tongues. And look at it. He wrote more revelation in the New Testament than anybody else. 
I wonder if that was connected to him praying in tongues. He already said that when you pray in tongues, you increase your spiritual capacity. And he also said he prayed in tongues more than anybody else. And by praying in tongues and praying in tongues and praying in tongues, he increased his ability to receive more and more and more revelation and divine insight. And that's why we have more revelation from Paul than from anybody else. Wow. So now you know, praying in tongues is not just gibberish. It is your human spirit communicating, praying to God, and the tongue of your spirit is loosed when you receive the second work of grace, which I call the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And my friends, if you've never received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you call us right now because today is your day. But I'll be back in just a moment. Someone has asked the question, is speaking in tongues praying in a real foreign language? Well, generally it is not. Speaking in tongues is the language of your own human spirit as it converses with God. This is very clearly explained in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. However, there are moments when you may give a message in tongues that somebody understands in their own language. This happened to me when I was a very young man when I was out on a beach and I decided to share Christ with someone and in a moment of frustration, not knowing what to say to them, I began to pray in tongues and all of a sudden they understood me speaking in their own native language. So it does happen. But usually when we pray in tongues, it is the voice of our own human spirit communicating with God. And you can't just pray in the spirit, you can also sing in the spirit and you can pray for God to give you the understanding. If you do not speak in tongues, or if you do speak in tongues, this series, Speaking in Tongues, What Is It and Is It Really for Everyone, will be an eye-opener and a game-changer in your life. Many people are confused about tongues, so Rick, who was also once confused about this subject, takes you into the scriptures to see what the Bible says about speaking in tongues, the purpose of tongues, are tongues really for every believer, the value of speaking in tongues, and so much more. You'll forever thank God for the clarity you receive in this important five-part series. And it's available in digital or physical format starting at just $11. In addition, we are also offering the books The Holy Spirit and You for $17 and Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit for $12. Both of these books have become favorite resources for Christians whose hearts are hungry for more of the Spirit of God. In each of these books, Rick gives you deep teaching and practical help to walk into the powerful relationship with the Holy Spirit that your heart longs to experience. Don't wait. Order your copies today. Bundle the five-part series, Speaking in Tongues. What is it and is it really for everyone? And the books, The Holy Spirit in You and Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. And for a limited time, we are also offering Rick's book, Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood for a special pre-sale discounted price. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey, this is Rick Renner, and I'm standing in one of the long corridors in the Tulsa headquarters building. And these corridors are lined with photography of our past ministry. For example, here, it's amazing. You see a picture of me and Denise first starting our ministry as we're traveling in the car with Paul and Philip on her lap, and there's little Joel. But then you look over here, and you see our Russian ministry. Here's Golden Stars with some of the Russian movie stars who came to help us. At that event, we had more than 16,000 senior citizens show up. That is amazing. Then you see the youth ministry and us working with members of the government. And here you see again me and Denise in our first little church we started in Arkansas many, many, many years ago. And then you look over here and you see us filming TV programs. I mean, there's just so much. And when you walk through these hallways, and look at all these pictures, you're just surrounded with what God has done throughout our ministry, and it is amazing. And now, every day in this facility, ministry is taking place. Oh, I wish you could hear the phone calls. And when our team begins to pray, it is like a roar of prayer that you can hear when you walk through our partner care ministry, or the letters that are going out, or the resources, and resources are books, and. USBs and all kinds of video and audio, and it's going to the ends of the earth. 
and we're able to do all of that because we have a facility where we can do it. And paying off this facility is our current goal. You know, when we started the Ministry Expansion Project, it was quite large, but we've already paid off half of it. That's amazing. And you helped us to do that. And I wanna say thank you. Please help us continue until we finish it. And if you're not a part of the team yet, please pray about becoming a part of our Ministry Expansion Project giving team so we can pay off all of this and then liberate all that money to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And that's our desire. So I wanna say thank you in advance for helping us. Well, today we've been looking at tongues. What is it really all about? And I hope this program has answered some questions for you. But I want you to order the entire series, which is called Speaking in Tongues. What is it? And is it really for everyone? The answer is yes. And my friends, you're not a second-class Christian if you don't speak in tongues, but you're missing something that God has for you. Your inner man is just crying out to speak to God. And when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, suddenly the tongue of your spirit is released so that you can communicate to God in a heavenly language. Ah, call us and we'll pray with you to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But you can order this and you can order the study guide. And we're also offering you two amazing books about the Holy Spirit. One is called The Holy Spirit and You, Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. And we're also offering you the book, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I want you to put your hand on your heart right now. If you've never received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you can receive it now. And if you already have, but you've not been speaking in tongues, my friends, it's time to get with it and begin speaking to God in your heavenly language. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you save us and then you baptize us in the Holy Spirit and you loose our tongue so we can speak to you freely in a heavenly language. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'll see you in the next program. But remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation. We would love to connect with you. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.